started getting into kind of the Instagram um, world of skincare a couple years ago and started my own page. And it's, it's become fun. Hey, guys. Allison's um, followers follow me, too. Um, and Allison and I actually went to college together. I um, know her sister uh, really well. And we were actually in the same sorority. Kristen <laughs> has been in my stories a few times. And Kristen and my sister are really good friends in Houston. So it's just a small world. But when I started talking about curly hair, so many of um, you guys were like, you have to you have to follow Allison. I was Hello, like, oh, I, I know Allison. This. And but, but, she reached yeah. out and was like, let's do this. So do you think she can tame this mess? That's the question. <laughs> we can tame the mess. I don't know. Yeah, this mess. <laughs> it's totally fine. Okay, y'all are all getting like slightly different views of where I am. Hello, everybody over there. Hello, everybody on YouTube. So we have a few different angles going. I thought this would be a really fun way to introduce you guys to Alyssa. She's, I want to say a friend of a friend, but you're a friend of family. So I know I know Alyssa um, through my sister. My sister's name is Kristen. She's in Houston. Y'all have probably seen her um, in my Instagram from time to time. And so um, Alyssa has mentioned, we talked about this, I think, like a year ago. It might have been a year and a half ago. It was like right when COVID hit. Right when yeah. COVID hit. And I mean, Alyssa, y'all can see that Alyssa has texture right from the root. <laughs> so like this hair might be a, a whole lot curlier than you even know it is. So like normally I'm talking about wavies and embracing your wavy hair. And Alyssa's going to start out as a wavy. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But if you keep up with this, like if you end up enjoying this and sticking with this, you may well end up a curly. Okay, because most wavies don't have this kind of texture, like, I mean, a quarter of an inch from your roots. So you might be, but you, and it might not be your style, and that's okay. But, you know, it's nice to know what we have growing on our own heads, because when we discover those little treasures, we're like, oh, you're a whole different personality. That Have you ever worn your hair curly or wavy? Like, consistently. I make it about two weeks when I try and then okay what happens <laughs> why do you fall off the why do you fall off the wave I get overwhelmed hair? with products I don't know how to do it I started following Instagram clipping and plopping and towels and then I just got overwhelmed and I needed someone to tell me what to do it is a whole different ball game um, and I think I just saw a post the other day and I try to not make negative comments on people's posts <laughs> or post them and say ugly things but I saw a post that somebody put up the other day um, that was talking about how you shouldn't like brush your hair or you should use this kind of brush if you're low density and you don't want your hair to fall out. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so wrong. So guys, there's just, there's so much noise out there telling you guys to do things that don't really, they don't really make an impact um, or they don't do what people say that they do a lot of the time. So that's part of why I wanted to become a cosmetologist because I was like, there's so much noise out there and I want to know how to do people's hair. I want to understand other people's hair other than my own. So um, just a couple of um, kind of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, I know you guys are going to be popping up questions and things like that. I will not be able to answer them because we have an hour. I want to give you guys some really good insight on her hair. So I'm sorry if you are in the chat and you see a question someone's answer or question that someone else has put out there and you know the answer, please feel free to like jump in and help them out, you know, or direct them to a post or a YouTube video or something like that that I've made before. Um, sound good? Um, one other thing, uh, for the people that are on the Hair Story chat, so if you guys are not on the Hair Story social chat, I believe if you still go RSVP, they'll still send you a link during this chat. If you're on my email list, I will be sending you a link to... Um, Oh, the link is the link for the hair story social chat is the only link in my bio right now. So if you just click that from Instagram, it'll take you straight to hair story. If for some reason, Instagram and YouTube, like there's too much feedback or it's just not working out streaming wise, it doesn't sound very good. Um, oh, thank you, Ellen. I got to talk to you guys about the French bob thing. This is my favorite haircut of all time. So I'll do a video on it later on YouTube. So um, if you click on that link, it'll take you straight to the hair story chat. So if Instagram and YouTube fail on us for whatever reason, the lead platform we're going to go with is hair story. I'm pointing to it this way because that's where it is in the room. Not that you can see that. <laughs> um, also, for the people on the hair story chat, you are the people that I will be answering your questions later. So be sure to ask all of your questions there. I will be sending out answers to like maybe the top two questions um, via my email list. Um, that that link to my email list is, um, I'll have to post that in my Instagram later. But if you go to my, my hairdressing website, which is texturestudio.com, it's T-X, 
ture-studio.com, you'll see a link there that says email list and you can go that way and sign up for the email list. And when you do that, then you'll get the email I sent out later that will answer some of the questions from the Hair Story chat. You'll also get the link to the Hair Story chat replay if you want it there instead of on Instagram or YouTube. Um, and then last, in about a month, maybe a month and a half, I think into September, um, or maybe, when are we doing this? I think it's going to be in, I don't know if I have the date just yet, but I'll let you guys know what it is. It's either going to be in August or September. I'm going to sit down with Wes from Hair Story, and we're going to go through like your top five questions, or maybe five unusual questions that we got about wavy hair, and just do like a back and forth interview talking about interesting wavy hair things. All right, guys. Okay, cool. Last thing is if you're on Instagram and you don't follow Alyssa, be sure to find and follow her. Her link is in my story. She's the Dallas Derm PA. There are some underscores in there. You'll find her. She is a brilliant wealth of knowledge for skincare. So we're going to talk about skin today some too. I will ask her all the questions. Um, there are so many um, people out there that uh, hair and skin influencers that they do their best sharing what works for them, but what works for them might not work for you. And I think when you are in a professional field or in a medical field, you've had the training, you know what you need to do. And I remember I was using retinol on my skin like every single day because that's what somebody on the Instagram, I won't name names, but you know who I'm talking about, told me to do. And I was doing way too much and I was destroying my skin barrier. So if you want legit skin advice, follow somebody, follow, you know, we talk about follow more hairstylists, follow more skin professionals. I'll leave it with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Tell me about your hair. You said something in your stories that cracked me up. You guys on YouTube, I'm sorry. You're probably going to have to look at my butt a little bit more. I hope you don't mind. Um, so in your stories, you said, I'm so surprised that it comes back curly, no matter everything I've done to it. So you have been curly. Um, you are very highlighted, which is beautiful. Uh -huh. It's a, your hairstylist does a wonderful job with your color. Your cut is not made for wavy curly hair, but that's okay. We're not cutting today. We were just talking about cleansing and styling. And I don't know that she even wants to change her haircut because she might go straight occasionally. You might not stick with this for the long term, mm -hmm. but I want to give you some tips and tricks for what works for you. So uh, question, what, why, what do you attribute about your hair is the reason that it just, no matter what you throw at it, it hangs on? Because I have the answer, but I want to know if you have the answer. <laughs> um, but bleach and heat <laughs> and um, um, I think heat. Wait, uh, bleach and heat. Okay. So lots of flat iron styling, mm -hmm. but why does it pop back curly? Why does it oh, pop back well, no matter what you throw at it? I mean, think naturally, the root that continues to because it's a strong it, curl yes and it keeps telling the rest to you but i mean i wouldn't consider this good here but i feel like it does curl decently at the root it does and i'll tell you why it's because your hair is naturally strong if you guys have followed me for any length of time you know that's my code word for the word coarse so Alyssa's hair strands are naturally very very thick and wiry each individual strand is really big around so knowing your texture strong or coarse medium and fine is really helpful to know. And a lot of times we think we're one and we're actually the other. Your hair professional should be able to let you know what that actually is. So when I look at your strands, when I see hair that is a little bit stronger like yours, it's not going to have the same breakage that someone with like a finer hair type like mine would have. So I'm more on the medium to fine side. So just knowing that about your hair is important. Knowing the property of the porosity of your hair. How well is it going to hold on to moisture? How, how easily is it going to let it go into the environment? Just like work like a sieve through to, of water. Do you know what I mean? Water is just going to evaporate and go right into the environment. Your hair is color treated. And we know that there's some damage to the cuticle, which is the outer layer of our hair, because we've been heat styling it. So we know it's going to be very porous. That means it's important for us to use at least two maybe three, we're going to go with just two for you that are kind of hand chosen for selected for reasons. Um, so using like two, maybe three styling products is helpful because it gives you layers of protection against moisture loss, hydration loss. Mm -hmm. They kind of are used in the same thing. The other um, idea is what's the density of your hair? That's the last property you really need to think about. Alyssa has a lot of hair. And when we talk about density, that just tells us how much product we need to use that tells us about how much product we're gonna to need to use. And sometimes if we're a little bit more budget strapped, we need to think about if I need to use a lot of product, then I can't be going and buying a hair product that's maybe $500 a bottle. That wouldn't make sense for me because I will go through that too fast. So that's really just for budgeting purposes, 
purposes and quantities in terms of how much product you're going to use. Okay, so let me see. Let me make sure everything is working here. This looks like it's working. This is the chat is disconnected, unable to connect to chat. I don't know why. Okay, I don't know that that's actually working. It looks like this is working. All right, just a quick touch base before we dive in. Okay, so I'm gonna put a cape on Alyssa and a towel on you. And we're going to start with the cleansing portion. What shampoo, here, this one is fancy, it has sleeves. I oh, sleeves wow. for me. Yeah. Oh, I love these. These are from Colton King. Oh, those are super cute. I love them. They thought of everything mm -hmm. in the cape. So tell me about your like current curly girl styling routine. Like what do you do? And like, what are you sort of willing to do? And I ask this to everybody, mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. And by the way, look down a little bit for me. I'm gonna put one underneath. Um, if you guys want to see like a full consultation and haircut, go to thewavylife.com. I have classes there that are pre-recorded that have companion workbooks with them and those walk you through everything. It's a two hour class. It's gonna be much more in depth than this, but if that's kind of your bag and you wanna get some verbiage on how to talk to your stylist and see how a haircut might be done, um, that might be really helpful to you. So, okay, tell me about your current Diva Curl styling routine as we move over to the shampoo bowl. Current routine is um, four Diva Curl products, which I posted on my Instagram a couple weeks ago. Okay. And the entire curly wavy community came at me. Um, because they were Diva? Yeah, it, they were not happy that I chose Diva Curl. Okay, um, okay, okay. I, I am, again, 90s in the hair care world, so I did not know. So I went to Ulta and I went to the curly hair section and bought the kit of four because I felt like that was exactly the kit of four. Which products were they? Shampoo, no poo. I don't know. Um, a conditioner, okay. a styling cream, and a gel. Okay. So I mean, okay. And okay. I washed my hair with both those products. And it's a no food, so it's not, not cleansing. Not it means, cleansing. I mean, it's not um, cleansing. Correct. Okay. And then I, while my hair is wet in the shower, soaking wet, I apply both products. Let it air dry. I don't even have a diffuser right now. So okay, that's okay. This is full blown, have to have. full blown air dry, and that's why I've been for two weeks. Except I straightened this this weekend, so I feel like I kind of undid some of the two weeks that I did. You, I you, so you did a little bit. You did a little uh, bit. Uh, I will tell you that for the purposes of like, if you decide that you do want to like really stick with it, I'm going to tell you some things. And you guys, if y'all have followed me for any length of time, you know this. Alyssa, sticking with it is the most important part. So consistency in a new routine is so, so important because you're kind of, I can't say you're letting your hair heal, but you're hydrating it on a new level that it hasn't experienced before. And it's um, being allowed to maintain that new hydration. So the, really, the goal is to really deeply hydrate your hair. Okay. Okay. Now, have you ever clarified, have you ever used a clarifying shampoo? No. Okay. So I'm going to do that first. But then I'm going to tell you what cleanser I really kind of like for you. Okay, I'm sorry, Instagram. If y'all are like at my back, I'm going to move you so you can kind of see right there. Cool. Okay, so this is what I have been using as a clarifying shampoo. It's not technically a clarifying shampoo, but it's it really is doing the job. So this is the AG Curl Fresh um, shampoo. We're going to start with that on Alyssa's hair because I bet you normally use a heat protectant, don't you? Okay, so heat protectants are full of silicones and that's not that's not bad but we don't want tons of silicones on our hair because they prevent our hair from interacting with the water in the air and it can really dehydrate the hair after a while but they have a really important job and that is to insulate the hair from too much heat damage so that's a good thing that you're doing but it's good to remove those after a while so what does clarifying shampoo do? A clarifying shampoo really is just a shampoo that is, it has um, a lot of surfactants right up front, whether they are um, sulfate free or whether they are sulfate based. That's a good question. And they, um, they don't contain anything that would like deposit on your hair, like oils or um, conditioning ingredients. So we kind of want to strip everything off of the hair so that when we then put like a good ingredient, like um, your deep conditioning treatment, 
your hair is really able to absorb it. Okay, so you saw that off. So as I was getting your hair um, wet, everything I could feel just uh, products on your hair. Mm -hmm. And it's not because you've been using bad products, it's just that hair is like a sponge and it really absorbs everything and it just sticks to it. Okay, so this is not something that you would need to do every single time you wash your hair um, because you're, if you move to using products that don't build up on your hair, like the Deaver Hall products really won't build up. The, um, the proteins in them might build up. That's, it's not a line I would choose for you. It's a really good beginner line. I know we talked about this some already. It's a really good beginner line because it's so high protein. Now, I know there was the whole Diva Curl scandal situation um, a couple of years ago, but I won't get into talking about that. So if you guys want to know more about that, if you're not up to date on that, um, you can you can Google that. I think the lawsuit is still going on. So um, they're a good line, I think, for people that um, have finer hair types or have very damaged hair and they're looking to get it to a place of health. Like you'll see really good results with Diva Curl um, because they start to fill in the cuticle and strengthen it and make it feel really, really good. But ultimately they, um, they can add too much protein to your hair and then it just, that kind of builds up and it sort of becomes like a straight jacket on your hair so that it can't curl anymore. It becomes at risk of breakage. So it's a good starter line, but then I would move on to something that's protein free. So I'm going to use Hair Story on you now. So this is Hair Story New Wash. And I'm just going to coat your hair. This. We're going to use this as conditioner today. Normally, I would really like to deep condition your hair after doing this part. But this is such a good, good tangle buster. I wish I could like pull this closer so you guys can see what I'm doing, but I just don't know if I can. So I'm using a good couple of pumps of the Hair Story New Wash. Again, we're using it as conditioner, but I would really recommend that you use this as your cleanser going forward. So it's kind of similar to the Diva Curl um, No Poo in that it is a cleansing conditioner, but you use it the same way. So you really massage it into the head like this. And then it should bust those tangles. Okay, so I'm kind of doing almost like a double cleanse on your hair because I'm using this, but it's also really conditioning. It has a really, really low pH. So I like knowing the pH of my products because it tells me how it will treat the hair. A high pH um, that's more alkaline is gonna open the cuticle a little bit. Is this hurting your head? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, okay, good. Feels good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, I want you to feel this right here, though. Feel, I want you to reach around and feel this part of your hair. Do you feel how saturated that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you have a towel right here if you want to write mm -hmm. that off. So that is how I want your whole head to feel okay. when you use this. Okay. And then that's going to sit on your hair and just do its job of keeping it really, really conditioned, keeping the pH low. When you keep the pH low, it lowers the cuticle. If you guys don't know what the cuticle of your hair is, it's just the outermost layer. Lorraine Massey um, has described it as kind of like being a pine cone. Have you and I talked about that at all? <laughs> okay, so if you visualize like a closed pine cone that hasn't opened yet, that's kind of how your cuticle might look if you if you look at it under a microscope. It's very um, it's very closed, tight. It's smooth on the outside, and um, it's almost it's almost got a shine to it, right? So when we color treat our hair, when we do um, different things to our hair that involve um, color or swimming or relaxing our hair. Um, we have to use products that have a higher pH that opens the cuticle so that we can make changes to the inside of the hair shaft, right? So if you use products that have a pH that's not low enough for your hair and skin, which is between four and a half to five and a half, you are in my way, then you won't keep the cuticle closed. All right. Mm -hmm. I know. So interesting. I, I like the mm -hmm. science you said because it explains mm -hmm. to me why. Yep. Like, why should I choose this? Why should I care mm -hmm. about that? That's a great visual too. The pine cone. The pine cone. Mm -hmm. I give I give the ring the credit for that mm -hmm. because too, if your if your hair cuticle is sort of open, then you've got. Um, let me show you. I'll show you kind of like it my hand. Your hair tangles easily. It's almost like Velcro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
it's all those like open pieces are just going to stick to each other like that mm -hmm. and then lock and then you have all kinds of problems. Okay, I want you to reach back and really feel your hair. That's how it should feel when okay. you're using either no poo. Yeah. Like I'm use more than you think you should. Okay, it's kind that. of like talking about skin. It's yeah. kind of like the oil cleansing method. Yeah. The yeah. more you use, the cleaner your hair will be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. That's good. It's a lot. It's yep. good. It's good. This is what I need. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Good. Do you have any questions so far? No. Good. Okay. If you do, ask them because okay. I can like talk a blue streak. But, like, yeah, I don't have questions. No, no, this is. Okay. Oh, oh, wait. I almost picked my favorite part. If you guys don't have the hair story cleansing brush, and it always feels better when someone else does it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when you stop using shampoo, um, your fingers become the manual cleanser so stimulating your scalp becomes even more important mm -hmm. so i like to use this little guy in like circles around the head and then back at the base of your neck is just like so good okay here's my question okay and this is probably stupid because i don't know anything about curly hair but i'm learning here today okay. how yeah. often am i washing my hair you don't have to wash your hair that often. Um, your hair, that's why we refresh. And so refresh is a big topic of conversation in the curly hair community. Am I right, guys? Do y'all know? Does everybody, like, everybody's like, tell me how to refresh. The, your hair is a plant. Your hair needs water every single day. Okay? So that doesn't mean you have to completely wet it. It's better if you don't completely cleanse it every single day. Although, if you're someone who works out a lot and your head gets sweaty and it gets itchy, um, a couple things you can do. You can use something that's so mild, like Hair Story New Wash, to wash your hair every single day. The original formulation is my favorite one. Um, the others are there, I feel like, just to be kind of extra. But that's my very favorite. So you can use it every single day. But remember, the more you handle your hair mm -hmm. and the more you manipulate your hair, you know, the more you grow the porosity of it. That's just kind of going to happen. But more than anything, you have to respect your scalp. So tell me about your scalp. Is it itchy ever? Does it feel, is it a scalp you don't think about? It, do not think about it. That's the best kind of scalp. Yeah. Okay. But for those of us with itchy scalps, mm -hmm. um, I love a product called Tonic from Colton King. And I'll use that on you here in just a second. It's so, 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 so good. It's cooling to the scalp. It has, um, oh, this is like testing all of my knowledge today. <laughs> um, it's got menthol crystals in it that bring um, a feeling of coolness to your scalp, mm -hmm. which is blood circulation and blood flow, which creates a really nice environment for healing. And um, it's got a low pH, so it keeps your scalp really healthy. It's got just so many great ingredients in it. I just love. Okay. Um, I'm going to use tonic. This is my baby bottle of tonic from Colton King. And that's going to go right here. So I'm going to spray it because as ladies, we always lose our hair right here mm -hmm. first. It's not very nice. Mm -hmm. So this will feel tingly for you later. So you'll have to let me know if you feel it while we're drying your hair. And I, I put it exactly where I want it. I lift up the hair and I spray it exactly where I want it to go. Because you can spray it directly on the hair if you want to. But of course, um, you won't get the same benefits to your scalp, especially because you have so much hair. So I'm going to spray it all over now. Kind of is like a pre-leave-in conditioner. Okay, the leave-in conditioner I'm going to use on you is Kevin Murphy Angel Rex. I really, really love this one. It will be posted, a link to it will be posted in my um, link tree on Instagram later today. I will put that back up in a minute. But it's called Kevin Murphy Angel Rinse. And it's just, it's a conditioner. It is not formulated to be a leave-in conditioner. But I have found it makes one of the best leave-in conditioners for high-density, um, stronger hair types. I love Innocent Sweet Spirit also, but I kind of wish that it had a pump top instead of a spray top and it's really really good for finer hair types so so when you use a leave-in conditioner i mean it's not a cream and a cream cannot be a leave-in conditioner because they don't have the same ph so i do think with curly hair you end up using more products you do because you're trying to do everything you can to have like model worthy hair but that's naturally really healthy so i tend to go heavier on products that really help with the health of my hair rather than trying to go with a lot of like styling products like your makeup you know what i mean to be the thing that makes up for not having great hair so i want you to get to a point where your curly hair is really really easy mm -hmm. okay so i've got leave-in conditioner in our hair and i'm gonna just bring my hand in and sort of squish scrunch some of that water and i'll get you to come all the way up yep Perfect. And then we will move back to where we were and take your styling products in. 
Okay. Um, now, I would have deep conditioned you today if this was like a real appointment, and I would be like, hey, you're a new client. We are definitely going to deep condition your hair today. And this is the one I would use. This will be in my link later, or in my stories later. Let me find my little bottle. Ah! I'll put that in a second. It's okay. This is the Kevin Murphy Hydrate Me Mask. I love this one. I feel like it's sort of like a rapid deep conditioner. It hardly takes any time to work. You can leave it on for five or ten minutes, and it's just, it's really, really good. It contains... Um, my brain is starting to go. Um, Ammo dimethicone. If you guys are not familiar with Ammo dimethicone, it's such a good ingredient. It is not the same. It is not even brothers with dimethicone because dimethicone is that ingredient that we really all want to avoid. So that's kind of another thing for you is just silicones. They have a place. They can be great, but they are complicated when it comes to styling and caring for curly wavy hair because they tend to sort of um, dehydrate it a little bit just by, you know, it's liquid plastic basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, ammo dimethicone, however, is really great for preventing breakage. So it, it is attracted to the damaged areas of your hair and just sticks to it like a bandaid, but it doesn't build up everywhere else and it doesn't build up in that spot. So it makes your hair cuticle like one long, consistent, undamaged piece. So it can help you grow your hair longer. Which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. If you want to do this for them, yeah. are you overwhelmed yet? Are you like, no, this no, is cool. no, this is great. Okay, okay. really, seven and all in. I love it. I love hair care and skincare. All right, mm -hmm. you got to tell me some skincare things. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna comb right here on the sides just because the shampoo bowl tends to do crazy things. Remind me, I don't think I even know where you part because you came in with the antifungal gel. Do you part right about here? Uh, uh, actually, right there, right about here. So you do kind of a deep side part. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn you this way so they can see you. All right. Do you all see how Alyssa's hair is wanting to sort of buckle right here? There's an, absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just a growth pattern. So I'm going to just comb this out to the side. Bring this up with my hands and give it a little squeeze. Okay. And then I just sort of adjust where everything lives because the truth is if you like the way it looks when it's wet, you will like the way it looks when it's dry. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let me see here. What else do I need to do? Got a little bit of water. Alyssa's hair is really thirsty, so I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. So it'll just help us absorb our products better. Okay, I am going to go back to a Hair Story product. So this is Hair Story Hair Balm. I'm going to be using this as our, um, that one's for you, so let me grab mine so I don't use them. I'm taking all the products, by the way. <laughs> like, tell me what I need. Tell me what to do. And uh -huh. do okay. uh -huh. So we're going to take about one pump of the hair balm. I don't know if YouTube over there is working. I can't, I've never been able to make YouTube work for me live. I don't know why. It says there's people there. Well, it like, did, and then it says chat disconnected. Oh, maybe it's just the chat. Yeah. Maybe the rest is working. Okay, it's working. I'm getting thumbs up. I've got 18 thumbs up. Okay, so people are there. People are there. Hi, friends. I'm sorry that you couldn't see me for the little while we were at the shampoo bowl. Um, I need more stands and things to put things on. Okay, so I'm going to spin you around so they can look at the back of your hair and watch how I apply this. Okay, so I've got um, hair balm from Hair Story all over my hands. And I'm going to apply this in sections. So I'm going to have you lean. I don't really like to so lean towards me. That's no, okay. That's okay. I don't really like to go upside down. I was always a fan of upside down. Flip it. Put product on it. But like, there are too many surprises when you come up, mm -hmm. and especially on somebody like you, you're a little bit tangle prone because you're a little bit high porosity. Remember those pine cone pieces? You had to do this. So if you go upside down, you put your product on, you stand back up. It's going to be scary, mm -hmm. and then you got to comb it again and do all this stuff again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because you have a lot of hair. I'm going to take this sort of in sections. I'm going to do your top section. I'm going to coat that pretty good. And then I'm going to do your bottom section here. Okay, so the two sort of techniques that I'm using, this is just to get you good coverage with the product. So the two techniques that I'm using, I'm raking with my fingers, and then I'm using praying hands mm -hmm. because I want to get really good coverage. Okay. Huh? Then I give it a little shake. And I let it accordion up naturally into my hair and give it a little squish scrunch. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to find this helps your ends to look healthier and like it's just a little bit less dry. I want you to go ahead and look at that in the mirror and see how different mm -hmm. that looks. Yeah. Can you, can you yeah. tell? Yeah. Now, I use a half a pump of hair balm on my entire head. 
just so you know. Mm -hmm. We're, because you're here is a little thirstier, we're going to have a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to use a little bit more, but we're taking into account your density uh -huh. and your porosity. Okay? So I think I'm going to use three pumps. Okay? This is going to be one pump that's like top section, bottom section. Okay? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to coat it gently. I'm going to come underneath here and do the same thing here. So I really want your ends to benefit from this. Okay? And I'm raking because your hair, again, is, is on the coarser side, so it's on the stronger side. And that means that you've got a lot of hairs that want to do their own thing. They got their own recipe, and they're like, look, I'm going to curl this way, and it's neighbor next to me saying, I'm going to. So it makes it harder for you to get, like, smoother, clumpier clumps because they all want to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. Does that sound yep. familiar? Yep. Okay. Do you have any, like, names for your hair or, like, things that you think about it as you're doing it? No. No. You're not like, all right, sister. <laughs> no, no. I, a lot, I think that, that a lot of us in the like curly world be like, okay, like there's one girl, I can't remember who it is. You guys on Instagram will probably know who's like, who has created an Instagram page just for one of her curls. Oh, I believe it's Ferdinand. I can't remember <laughs> who it is. And it cracks me up because it's like, we develop such like a love of these curls. We're like, oh, you again, you're back. Like, you know, when, when you go like, I didn't realize that like I had this curly hair and then that one juicy one is like always right there. I mean, you must name it. It's like, hey, it's, it's like sold. Oh, I'm going to text you with the names. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a few names. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. We're going to do the same thing with gel. I am going to use Jesse Curl Spiralicious on you. Okay. So here's Jesse Curl Spiralicious. I love this for coarser hair types. Also, this is a great frizz fighter and it's what, 108 degrees outside mm -hmm. today. It's fine. This is the stolen summer in my mind. This is the stolen summer where we just didn't get to enjoy it. It's fine. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Has it been hurting you? It's uh -huh. been hurting me. Uh -huh. It's horrible. Okay, so Jessica Spiralicious, we're going to use about the same amount. I'm going to do, I might do more than that. I'm do one full pump of this. So I'm using a big bottle of Spiralicious. I'm going to do the same thing I did before where I'm going about, I'm like four inches away from your root because I don't want to take all that um, beautiful lift that you naturally have from all your definition. But whatever's left on my hands, I'm going to just glaze over the top. And then any pieces that like kind of fall out or that frizz up a little bit, I'm going to give them a little bit more than that. Okay. Okay. I want you to get your hand right there and squish that. That's what that should feel like. Mm -hmm. Does that feel about like what you do at home? Uh, not, I wasn't using as much stuff. Not as much? Yeah. Okay. And I felt like I was using a lot, but no, this is good. That's a good demo. I think that what, what you will find, and I'm going to lift this up, by the way, because the back of your head is not flat, but your hair goes straight down in the back. So look mm -hmm. in the mirror for me. When you style your hair at home, lift it straight up and then let that kind of fall. Okay. And then give that a shake and it'll give you some natural lift back there. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more for that. That section I'm noticing is like the driest. And I see that on a lot of people where... You know, you'll have a section that sort of has its has its own vibe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's its own thing. Okay. Now, are you gonna have to use this much product forever? No. Like if you deep condition monthly, just once a month. You don't even have to do it every other week. I mean, you don't have to do it every week. It's what kind of whatever you have bandwidth for. What do you feel like you would have commitment for? How how long does a deep conditioning with it depends on the deep conditioner. Take. With, the, with the Kevin Murphy one, it's probably about five minutes. Oh, um, I could do that once a week. Do that once a week? Yeah. Totally doable? Yeah. Okay. That means you would use some kind of clarifying shampoo, something a little bit. You probably already have a shampoo at home that would be considered a clarifying shampoo. Send me pictures of what you have at home for okay. shampoos, and I'll just tell you. Okay. Okay. So. Perfect. We're all squishy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to rinse off my hands. And where did my little towel go? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, everybody hanging on in there? Cool, cool. Hey, everybody. All right, we're going to start to dry Alyssa's hair, but I want you guys to know it's going to be a little bit noisy, and I can't mute this, so I'm sorry in advance, uh, but it is a nice one, so it's not too loud. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to squish out some water, okay? So um, if you were doing this at home, in your shower, putting on your sign products, 
let your styling products live with you in the shower. I think you're already doing that with your beautiful products, right? Yes. Awesome. So you don't have to put your products on when your hair is a complete like sheet of water. You can use your hands. You know how we, I don't know if you're familiar with the term scrunch off the crunch. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Only okay. because you had mentioned it. So okay. Okay. So scrunch off the crunch. We all know that we do that when our hair is dry. Um, and it's got gel or whatever that might be making it crunchy in there. But I like scrunch out the water with just my hands before I put my products in. So I might lean over and just give each section a gentle squeeze to take some water out before I use something that's going to draw a lot of water. Because I know that I want a little bit more definition in that way. So the more water you leave in your hair, the more definition you're going to have. The more water you pull out, so the less water, the more volume you're going to have. It'll be less clumpy. It'll be less shiny. These are not bad things. It just depends on what you want. So if you start thinking about what look do I want? Do I want to be like, you know, Beyonce fluffy curls today? Or do I want to be like smooth, shiny ringlets today? Then all of that goes back to how much water did you leave in your hair? Okay. okay. Now I would say use a t-shirt or a t-shirt towel. There's one I love called hair repair, but you can just use any t-shirt. doesn't matter. Cotton t-shirts best. Um, but for the sake of speed and drying your hair on this video today, I'm going to use the microfiber towel that was around your neck. And I'm choosing to use this one because it's already kind of wet. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to pull a lot more water out of your hair than a t-shirt would because all these loops have surface area. And that surface area is all going to pull out a whole lot more water. But because it's already wet, it's not going to absorb as much. So it's my happy medium for today. Mm -hmm. Okay, look up for me. I use directional stuff a lot because it just tends to help get the hair away from the scalp so that we can lift it easier rather than going completely upside down. Okay, cool? Yeah. Cool. What are you thinking about all this? No, oh, it's awesome. It's good. You're just absorbing it all? Yeah. This yeah. Is exactly what I needed. Okay. So I'm going around and just doing one squeeze. I'm going to have you tilt pretty far this way just because you're parked that way. Awesome. And I let it accordion up naturally. So when you're styling your hair too, don't like scrunch like this. Mm -hmm. Let it kind of it come up into your hand. So let me see you practice that one, like over here. Mm -hmm. Lift it. You're going to go all the way up. You're going to bring it like this. You can even use another hand to lift it and give it a little okay. scrunch like that. Okay. So get your other hand in there. Because every time you lift away from your scalp, you're creating more lift, right? Yes. Yes. You got it. Look at how good it's looking already. I'm so excited. Okay, come this way. This is awesome. Okay. One scratch, another scratch, underneath scrunches. Okay, now we might not be able to get your hair completely dry for our little, I'm going to lean you forward so I can pull this yeah. towel up from under you. Sorry, I'm like digging yeah, in your business good. here. But aren't you cooler now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to dry her hair. It's going to be a little noisy, but I'm going to give you guys a little preview of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it this way. Now, you don't have a diffuser at home. That's totally fine. You don't really even necessarily need to root clip. You know, I'm going to do that first. I never do it first, but I'm going to do it first because you don't diffuse at home. And so this is your tutorial for how you're going to do this at home, okay, if you want to. Mm -hmm. You already have so much hair. You get so much good natural lift. I'm very, very jealous of this natural lift because I ain't got nothing, sister. <laughs> you also have great natural lift because you have texture from the root. Okay, so the first one I like to put in, I go straight to the part, and it goes right in the front, and this is called your part sandwich. It's not the kind of sandwich you want to eat. Mm -hmm. It's a little of one side and a little of the other side brought together to sort of establish mm -hmm. that height right in the front. The only reason you might really want to do this is because you have so much hair. It will help your hair dry faster in here. Okay. Okay, so... How do I describe how I put these in? I pinch a little hair up. See, there's my stomach mm -hmm. talking. Did you hear that? Yeah, there it goes. Okay. I, I use more clips for more control rather than fewer clips for. Um, I know some people like to use those like big claw clips. Those have never worked for me. Um, I like to be able to have a little more control than that on where everything's going to go. So Alyssa also has some growth patterns back here that push you that way. That's okay. Remember, we're going for perfection today. You don't have to do this at home, mm -hmm. okay? Um, unless you just want to. And I have the benefit of seeing the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Now, I am obsessed with the way the back of my head looks. 
So I have like a swing arm mirror. I have one of these in my Amazon shop. I think they have it at Bed Bath & Beyond where you can kind of pull it out and see the back of your head like in your big mirror behind you in your bathroom. Uh -huh. And I love it because I'm like, oh, you crazy today. Like I can fix you because I can see you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to lift this up in here and where do I want to put this clip? I'm looking at all your curl patterns and I'm like, you are curly and you stick up and you are straight. So I'm going to like, I'm going to take pictures of this for you. And you're going to be like, what in the world? And again, this is not something that you have to do. This is something that you do because maybe you want to. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then don't do it. Okay. All right. Now on people that wear their hair parted to the side, I almost always put in a second row so that they sort of alternate. You kind of understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's so funny. It's so quiet in here. And you're such a good listener. And I usually have my like music on. And I'm like, bah. and the other person's talking to you. You're like, I am listening. I, I, I'm like really soaking it all in. <laughs> I am listening. <laughs> okay. So can y'all see that second row there on, on the YouTube and on the Instagram? Let me make sure you guys can see that. Hi, guys. How's it going? We have 67 people on Instagram. I don't know how many are on. We have 95 on there. Fun. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. This is fun. Okay. Um, where's your phone? Is this your phone? Yeah. All right. Open it for me. I'll take a picture for you. Okay. okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Side view. And look up for me. Good. And this side and we will post these on Instagram later if you guys want to see them if you're cool with that totally. <laughs> phone. you can send it to me I can post it totally okay back to drying so um I always like to start at the back for me personally just because I like to make sure that's where I get lift first so one thing to know about your hair I'm gonna get sciencey again you don't have to remember this but since you are like mm -hmm. a doctor scientist person yeah. let you know okay your hair is made of three different kinds of bonds one of those is called your hydrogen bond it's the thing that makes your hair go straight when it gets wet. They're all broken. They all just break. So luckily you have those other two kinds of bonds because otherwise your hair would just like melt into like a jelly and go down the drain, which is what happens when you use Nair. Okay. So um, we're not using Nair today. I did not use Nair on your hair. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate that. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. So, um, so when those bonds are broken, when you start busting out a hair dryer, I mean, you're, they're all forming right now as your hair is drying in the air, that all those bonds are forming each and finding each other, right? But if you use something like a blow dryer, it's really crucial for me to use, use a blow dryer because otherwise I'm just kind of frizzy. Mm -hmm. So the looser your curl, just the looser and frizzy you're, you're going to look, unless you kind of bring a little more control into it. And so when I use this, I'm rapidly putting those bonds together in the shape that I want them, right? Mm -hmm. With a tool that allows me to form my curls in the best way they can possibly be formed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna have you look up just a little bit. So when I do this at home, I lift up the back of my head and I bring the dryer up like that. So it's kind of a, it's like a yoga pose, mm -hmm. right? It's like it's like you're getting kind of a workout. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna lift this up. Here goes the sound, guys. Hopefully it's not too loud. I have this on low heat and medium speed. You can put it on medium. Like two in fact, I'm gonna bump it up to medium heat just to get some of the water off. But you let me know if it's too hot. I've always got my finger on the full shot button, too. Always hitting full shot because it's hot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, your hair, because you normally air dry it, it feels a certain length to you. Mm -hmm. I did not cut Alyssa's hair today. You all saw that I did not cut Alyssa's hair today. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to feel a lot shorter. Yeah, I mean, it's going to bounce up quite a bit because, again, I am arranging those those bonds where I want them. Now, here's a tip for when I dry the hair. I do everything in the top hemisphere of your head before I do the bottom hemisphere of your head. And that's because I want to have, I want to influence the lift and the volume there first. This, I care less about. I can catch up with that. Mm -hmm. If this dries where I don't want it to dry first, it's a whole lot harder to change. Okay. It's yeah. harder to change dry hair. So when we talk about refreshing, 
When we talk about recession, we're dampening the hair and then re-influencing those bonds because we're breaking some bonds. That's why we wet it. The hair needs water to begin with. It needs something wet. And we want to break some bonds so that we can reform the curl. So that's the basics of refreshing your hair. And so we'll talk about that when we're done drying it. And I'll show you how to use that. I grabbed um, a tonic, a token clean tonic for you for refreshing your hair. And I'm going to move around. Look at this right now. I'm still lifting everything that's like. If I could draw a line from the top of one ear to the top of the other, then I would, that's all I would be drying right now. Once that's kind of where I want it, then I'll come down here. Okay. And again, if you guys want to see this over and over again, the wavylife.com, my uh, wavy experience master class is a class that you can own, that you can watch this as often as you want. It will have all this in it. Okay. So when you refresh, I like to use token and tonic. Okay. You can also just dampen your hands with water, like you want water moving, and then like stretch it, sort of just get it a little bit damp, and then go in with like some kind of product if you want to add more texture or if you want to add more curl. But just getting your hair damp will reactivate your products from your previous wash day. And okay. that should be enough for you for refreshing. But your hair is really dehydrated. So your hair is going to lose curl more quickly than somebody's hair like mine who's been doing this for six years. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now coming, coming, coming around to your face. I'm gonna have you lean a little bit this way. I'm gonna pick this hair up. This is everything above your ear. So this is called pixie diffusion. You know what a pixie curl is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, and I'm going to turn the down by your ear. This is pixie diffusion. You bring out a curl up to your scalp and holding them. Kind of like you do your making little pixie curl right mm -hmm. against your scalp. And I'm going to hold it here for maybe 15 to 30 seconds. And the reason I do that is because I want everything to dry evenly. Right. If I try to dry just one side by itself, the other side is already drying with gravity, like at the wheel. Right? Because gravity, y'all know there, there's a phrase that I use all the time, and it is that uh, water is heavy, as you know, mm -hmm. and gravity is cruel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those two things combined, mm -hmm. both in your skin and your hair, are not very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But look at how much lips we're crazy. already getting. Do you see how much this is like? popping up. And this is just a diffuser. This isn't any magic of any product that I've used. This is just because the diffuser is a very powerful instrument. Okay. So I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to have you lean this way towards me just a little bit. All right. I'm going to lift this up with my fingers. I got it like that. Let me see if I can turn you where this is. What we'll end up doing at the end is hover diffusing over the top of your hair. Okay. Yeah. Now you have three boys. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So we have very different. I have two girls. Mm -hmm. So we have very different uh -huh. households. Uh huh. Very. Yeah. I know we were talking on the phone last night, and my girls were crying over hurt feelings. And you said there's there are tears in your house. I said, why are there tears in your house? Like it's all physical tears. Like you hit me. <laughs> like that hurt. Like, really no emotional tears. Oh, no emotional tears. No, 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 no. Only emotional tears. Yeah. Uh-huh. Alright, so this guy's on just a bit. Okay. Alright, give us some skin knowledge. I don't know if everyone can hear you, but drop some skin wisdom for us as I'm going to skin wisdom. Everyone always asks what what unless like I ask you what do I need product wise for my hair, people are always like, tell me what to do for my skin. Okay. Which is really hard actually because everybody's skin is different, right? Yes, same thing. So it's, I can't look at you and say like this is what you need. I understand. But I think there are three like really simple ways to start a skincare routine um, that everyone can benefit from. And if you follow me on Instagram for long enough, you know my number one thing is sunscreen. Uh, sunscreen. Sunscreen. You can't. You don't leave the house without it. And when you come in and talk to me about anti aging, and I ask you if you're wearing sunscreen today, and you tell me no, then I say let's start over. That's how I feel about a leave-in conditioner. Okay. So you start with a leave-in conditioner. Mm -hmm. If you didn't. Then we need to talk. Then we need to start. That's that's <laughs> the basic. Okay. okay so leave-in conditioner is akin to is akin. Yes. To sunscreen. Got it. 
is to hair as sunscreen is to skin. That is so sunscreen, and you've got to find it's not at everyone's like like copper tone at Target. No, so there's lots of elegant no. sunscreen. It can be if that's what you like and will wear. If you'll wear it, that's uh, right. it's whatever you will wear. So find a sunscreen that you like. Follow people that have um, similar skin tones to you if you're looking into tinted sunscreen just because tints can vary widely. Mm, that's um, so that's like a super helpful thing. I, I don't tend to wear tinted sunscreen because I'm fair. Um, have you tried the Sierra Blue one? It's, it's good, but it's a little, the color's a little it's bit a little too, too orange. orange it, basically anything is Let too me see your wrist. Hold up your wrist to me. Yes, you are lighter than Yes, I am, I am pinkier. You're pinkier, and I run yeah. with pink undertones too, but you're even. Um, yeah. Tinted sunscreen is interesting, though. It has iron oxide in it, which is um, a protectant against visible light. And so anybody that's contending with, like, pigment, um, melasma, brown spots, uh, products with iron oxide are super helpful um, on top of just all the benefits of the UVA and UVB protection from, like, zinc oxide and... Um, all the chemical sunscreen. So, so are there iron oxides in makeup? There are. And your foundation offers a little bit of protection. Exactly. To visible light. Um, so foundations do have iron oxides. That's what creates pigment. Um, so if you like a non tinted sunscreen and you wear foundation, like I do often, you're fine with, with that. But a lot of people just want to put a tinted sunscreen on and like a cream flush and run out the door, especially in 105 degrees. Um, so that's, you know, an easy thing to do. Second thing is vitamin A, vitamin A, vitamin A, vitamin A derivatives, which are retinol. Everybody knows that retinols are the holy grail of anti-aging. Um, what a vitamin A uh, topical does is increase the skin cell turnover. So it's great for texture, tone, pore size, wrinkle prevention, light hair care. Retinols come in all different forms and fashions. You can get stuff over the counter. We sell stuff in our office. You can get prescriptive retinols. The stronger the retinol prescriptive, the more effective it's going to be, but also the more irritating. So, again, there's millions of retinols. It's hard for me to tell you where to start with a retinol. How often should you use a retinol? So, if you're coming to see me in the office, I typically, and you're totally naive to skincare, I tell people start out two to three times a week. Um, and I think you should introduce one product at a time. So, if retinol is where you're starting, mm -hmm. the rest of your skincare is super simple. And the nights you're not using your retinol, you're just looking at, like, a cleanser and a moisturizer. People want a serum, people want an essence, people want all this stuff. But when you they start, fancy, they I like fancy. fancy. I like fancy too, like fancy. but you need to understand what your skin needs. And you've got to get your, your good retinol base first, and then you can start adding products in. And then last is a vitamin C serum, which is not essential, but I think most people this day and age want to do everything they can. Um, vitamin C serums create like a shield of armor. Um, all like over your skin during the day. Day. Okay. You can use them at night too, but a lot of the good vitamin C serums stay active in your skin for like 48, 72 hours. They're also, they can also be quite expensive. And so I think just daily, first thing on your skin after a cleanse is where I start with the vitamin C. And those are truthfully the three like most important things. And then you can, wow, this hair is curly. <laughs> this hair is curly. You're like, what is happening? I knew you'd be surprised. Yes. Part of what I was like, oh, turning you away. Like, <laughs> let her talk to the cameras and also be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you so said the top three are sunscreen, sunscreen retinol, retinol, and vitamin C. Sunscreen, retinol, vitamin Y'all write that down. And then yep. we're going to have Alyssa tell us what order to use our products mm -hmm. in. Because that is like the number two mm -hmm. thing I think that everyone's mm -hmm. like, what do I do? Okay, but before we do that, I want to show you guys. And this, again, is on the, we're kind of getting close to time, is, is on the Wavy Experience Masterclass of mine. Is talking about the angles at which to hold the diffuser. Okay? I like to hold them, I like to follow the shape of your head. Okay, so I like to hold them down here so they get lift here that's not mm -hmm. just like up, but it's like in. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're, the way that we dry your hair can also impact the shape of your haircut. So they can all support each other. Mm -hmm. So your cut, your products, the way you dry your hair, they all support each other. They come together to kind of give you the, the look that you want to achieve. And so the look that I'm achieving for you because you're like, tell me what to do mm -hmm. in my chair is more of like a diamond shape. So we're lifted here. We're going to be wider on the sides, even though I didn't cut your hair. And then because I can use my dryer to dry this this way, and kind of push this in mm -hmm. and push this out. This gives me a smoother like look coming into mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. into your chin area. Okay. Can you believe this is the same haircut? It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay. All right. So I'm going to dry this area right here a little bit more, and then we're going to hover at the top okay. while you tell us, and then you'll be surprised what order 
to use our products in. Okay, start AM because uh -huh. it's AM uh -huh. and then go PM uh -huh. so that everybody can remember this tonight. And can you guys hear Alyssa okay over my dryer? Yeah, I'm getting lots of hearts. That always means yes to me. So I'm like, okay. I can talk louder. Hi, too. guys. Oh, you're like, I can talk louder. I can talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> she does not need a megaphone. She has uh -uh. a super talent. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Okay. All right. Okay. Order of products. Um, AM. AM. There's a lot of people that say apply your products thinnest to thickest. Oh. Um, to me, that feels super complicated because, like, I, it's hard for me to tell. I guess if you're using a serum that's thinner than a moisturizer, but if you're using more than one serum, how do you figure it out? So the way I teach people to use products is put your most important ingredient closest to your skin. So after you cleanse in the morning, your most important active ingredient, aside from sunscreen, which is your last step, it would be your vitamin C serum. So cleanse vitamin C serum first because I want that good protection straight on my skin. Then you can go to layering your next thing. So if you like a little bit of moisture, you can do hyaluronic acid, which is just a um, humectant that helps seal in moisture. You can then do moisturizer. You can do a moisturizing SPF. So if you don't feel like, depending on your level of oiliness, more, uh, sunscreen goes on as your last step in your skincare before your makeup. So people are always confused about that. So I'm a super simple skincare person. I cleanse, I do a vitamin C. When I'm playing around with products, I might do like a, a lightweight serum of some form and then a moisturizer and then my SPF and then my makeup when I'm wearing it. I don't do like 17 different steps, which oftentimes you'll see skin pe skincare people do. I don't have time for that. <laughs> and you gotta let them dry in between and it gets super complicated. Oh, no. wait, you have to let them dry in between? So in the real, if, like if you had a perfect, if you, the perfect world, you give them a couple minutes in between, I am not in the perfect world. I give mine like 30 seconds just because I know how they feel when they're layering. And if I don't give some of my products a little bit of time, they'll kill under my um, makeup. So I do, depending on which ones I'm using, give a little bit of time in between, but not like five minutes. Um, and then nighttime cleanse is first, and I love double cleansing. Uh, I love double cleansing when you're wearing makeup or lots of sunscreen. If you're not doing any of that, I don't think you need to like dehydrate your skin with a double cleanse. But it, the idea behind a double cleanse is a Korean-based method for skincare, which K Beauty is super huge right now where you use an oil-based cleanser to break up all of the, like we were talking about with hair, break up all the junk and get it all off your skin. You got me with that element. It is there, they did 50% off it all the time. I was like, final yeah, this up. Yeah. And, and is, it, is it worthy? It I, is worthy, but worthy. you know what? I love it so much for the fragrance because you said it smells so good. Yeah. I love it so much for the fragrance and the feel that, and I don't wear a lot of makeup, so usually it's just the sunscreen for me. Yeah. And I would just use that as a single cleanse. Which you like, can totally. Good. Then you, it, and you feel like it, it just gets off all your, all your whatever you're done for the day and then i follow with like a water-based cleanser um or for me i love like um an aha bha cleanser or something with a little bit of acid because i know my skin can tolerate it and so that'll be my two step in a double cleanse not a fan of like a new you know, makeup wipe you're full of chemicals they're irritating you're tugging on your skin like if you're still taking your makeup off with a makeup wipe if you hear anything today go get an oil-based cleanser there's, they're everywhere. Okay, you know what Alyssa should do later today if you have time? Like after this, post your favorites in okay. your stories. So okay. y'all watch her stories or a post. Whatever yeah, 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 yeah. Stories. I'm not to tell you what to do. <laughs> no, no, like, you stories are always easier. I, I, I am a story girl. <laughs> I post a few of yes, them between. so she'll post her favorites and stories and you guys can check that out later. That'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And just so y'all know right now, I am just going through and finishing touches with her blow dry where I'm kind of pinching with my fingers to see where is it still wet. Not everybody's always still wet right here. So I'm going to get in your face a little bit and you can talk through it. Yeah. the rest of that, which you have in mind. But I thought you should post your favorites. No, I will absolutely. People will be asking later, what are Alyssa's favorites? I'll be like, I don't know, go ask Alyssa. And I, and I get, people get overwhelmed. I get, obviously, I work, I get, I work in a place where I get tons of skin care. Companies send me skin care. So I'm always posting and then people are like, wait, do I need to change out what I did? Because you just posted this new product. No, like find the things you like. You need to be consistent with your skincare for at least six months to notice differences. Oh. Even if your goals are to notice differences, some people don't. Some people like how the way they look and they just want to preserve it. I'm going to ask you to remember oh. that about your hair. Too. Oh, okay. Okay. See, our it, it, oh. <laughs> six months of no six heat. Six months. Six months of no heat. Can you do it? I don't know. Can you promise me? <laughs> Can you promise me? Your I feel like the accountability on Instagram. Like I can't. Uh, everybody, everybody. Like, they're gonna see me on my next story with straight hair, and they're gonna be like, "We're gonna not follow you." No, anymore. you have to do what you're comfortable with. No, but, but I, I'm, 
I'm, but you will see, just like you will, you see results in your skin when you stick with something yes. consistently. You will see it, but it also might not feel like you. And so if you're looking at yourself going, oh my gosh, I will talk to you guys really fast about the psychology of like what happens when you start wearing your hair curl. You're like, my head looks so big. Mm -hmm. Like people freak out because they're used to seeing like a small close to like mm -hmm. their face, their head exterior. And then you look in the mirror and it's like this, but here's what happens then. You get to maybe six months or a year and you're like, it's not big enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, just I need more. I need it to be big. Like, and then you want it to be long if you want it to be big. And you actually have so much density and so much curl that you could be like long and big, like beautiful curls. Okay. If you wanted okay. to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, fine. I'm really trying to lean into this. But you got to decide what works for you. I know. Yeah. Okay. 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 Continue. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just um, Tell you the Yeah. No, no, no. So, um, PM is a, cle a double cleanse. I personally put my retinol straight on my face, but oftentimes when you're trying to introduce yourself to a retinol, you can create like, a, we call it like a retinol sandwich where you put a thin layer of moisturizer, your retinol, and another, another layer of moisturizer oh, I love that. creates a barrier. You still get some penetration, but less irritation. You'll oftentimes see like germs or other skincare influencers talk about like mixing your retinol with moisturizer. That has never worked for me because I don't feel like I can equally distribute the moisturizer into the retinol and get an even distribution all over my face. So if yeah. I'm trying to decrease the potency of my retinol, I think doing a thin layer of moisturizer, retinol moisturizer. The other thing you can do is start with a much weaker retinol, let your skin start get, getting used to it. And I'm talking like as simple as like rock retinol or Neutrogena rapid wrinkle repair. If you are so new to a retinol, those are really easy places. Yeah. Those are retinols, um, which are less potent versions of vitamin A, uh, but they're still really effective. There's actually a new paper that talks about the efficacy of OTC retinols being equivalent to a lower strength prescription retinoid over time. So it's all about consistency with a retinol or retinoid. I personally have access to every prescription retinoid in the world. And I just, I, my skin gets dry and I can't use other products. So I'm much more on a lower potency retinoid, but more frequent with it. Um, so if there's anything you hear from me talking about skincare today, it's introduce a retinol into your skincare routine. Give it six months, your pores will be solid, your wrinkles will be softer, oh. your brown spots will be less dark. Okay. Don't use it when you're pregnant. Um, that's really the only restriction. One of the biggest myths out there in the world is I can't use my retinol during the summer. You can. Why would you stop something? We're in Texas. It's sunny all year round. But why would you stop the most beneficial skincare product half of the year? It doesn't make sense. Use a sunscreen and remember to reapply half yes. of the year. It's literally like my tennis players are like, well, I'm outside in the sun every day. I can't use a retinol. No, you can. Wear your big hat. Wear your SPF. Like, you're not going to overburn. I'm laughing because your skin. my friends from Australia that will be watching uh -huh. this later are going to be like, it's not summer half the year. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what? Well, it is here. It is. It truly is here. So, Find a retinoid, retinol that you'll use, find a sunscreen that you'll use, and be really dedicated to the routine, and you will notice differences. It doesn't have to be 17 steps, and it doesn't have to be super expensive products. Here's a question for you. Do you dot your retinol on? Yes. Day? So yeah, my, exactly my medical right. assistants in my in the room has literally like rehearse the, the skincare <laughs> products, your routine. Like literally, I say squeeze a piece, bring piece size down amount of your product. Put it in the, and it's how I teach all my acne patients to use their products too, but squeeze a green piece size out in the palm of your hand okay. and then evenly distribute. So take your index finger, dab, 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 dab. You'll have five little white dots. You'll work them all the way over. If you're using a pretty potent retinol or retinoid, I say to stay below the orbital bone. If it's not as potent, you can likely work it up under your eyes. It's just that skin is much thinner and you can be irritated, get irritated buy it. But yes, pea size amount, that's actually how I apply all my products so I know I'm getting an even distribution. How can I make my eye, my upper eyelids lift without surgery? <laughs> There's just nothing for that. I'm okay. I Botox, Botox, Botox. A little bit of Botox can give you a brow lift. I haven't done that yet, but I've been thinking about it. Yeah, you should yeah, see yeah. you when you're ready. I will. You know I will. Okay. I want you guys to just sort of see where Alyssa's hair is at the moment. Kind of flip her and give her like a little 360 view. You know, when I flip you on, you're going to see it. I mean, you're going to see it anyway, but it's fine. And then we'll take the clips out and we'll kind of shake it out. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Everybody see the view here. How's that looking? Like those ends look so much more moisturized and it's so springy. It like is. this is the magic of diffusing. Crazy. Diffusing is magic. And I could have made it much curlier if uh -huh. I had held it here. Uh -huh. It's a little bit damp. You can feel it. Go ahead and just give it like a little squeeze. Yeah. This is like, because there's still a little bit of moisture in there. I mean, you're going to walk outside and it's going to like, the environment's going to suck it up in two yeah. seconds anyway. Um, but this is like, 
it's not super duper crunchy. We've got that hair balm underneath. No, it's not crunchy. At all. We've got the, we've got a lot of spiralicious. And spiralicious will make a lot of you guys really crunchy because maybe you have less hair, maybe you have finer hair. But on Alyssa's hair, she, it's like this is so delicious. Like, give me more, right? Okay, so because I put all the hinges out when I clipped your hair, it's going to make it easier to pull them out without pulling out your hair because I can easily find those hinges. Mm -hmm. Now, I might yank out one hair or two. I'll be very careful, but you didn't need those because you have so many. It's fine. <laughs> it takes minutes to but it's easier than clipping from underneath. And I, I say that, but I'm the worst example. Just so you guys know, I'm always honest. I still clip my own hair from underneath mm -hmm. because I'm just so used to doing it that way. But if you lift... You lift it. I want you to do one. Mm -hmm. I want you to lift it and then clip it where you think it needs to go. Here, take one of these little babies and like put it in there. So find so a little, like a quarter inch, inch, like a quarter like, inch piece of hair, right. and then like pop it so that it's like straight up from your scalp. So your scalp, yes, very nice. So, just, so your scalp is like the center of the universe mm -hmm. when you clip. Mm -hmm. Everything revolves around that. So that's why I did two rows on this side, but only one row on that side. Okay, because I want you to look like a gentle, like rolling hill rather mm -hmm. than like a ski slope. Mm -hmm. The other nice thing that the clips do is because you're not quite as curly on top, like mm -hmm. right here, it adds more texture so that you match here down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That yeah. Curly hair is cool, right? It is. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. This is like the funnest job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I've had a few. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think we've got them on. This is how I check to see if I got them on. Just sort of run my hand like that. Okay, so we're going to flip. Now, if you wanted to keep all this definition, you could. Mm -hmm. You don't look crunchy, but you mm -hmm. look very fine. Yes. So we're going to take a little bit of that. So this is when I'm going to ask you to flip. Okay. And give your head like a good shake. Yep. Okay. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Okay, stay right there. Then I like to take my hands and loosen it just a little bit at my scalp. So get your hands and just loosen it at your scalp a bit. Yep. Good. And then you can do a couple things to either get the crunch out. You can scrunch it like that. Do a few of those. If you have any really crunchy pieces, which you doesn't look like no, but if you did and you couldn't get out much, you can kind of clap those out or pop them out like that. Okay. All right. Do a nice big flip up. Like a Pantene commercial. Mm -hmm. I should film a commercial. Wow. How cute is that? How cute is this? Is it, is it like when I did Kristen's hair? Did you know I did Kristen's hair? Uh -uh. I did Kristen's hair at my parents' house. This is my sister. Uh -huh. And she was like, oh, Allison, I don't know. I don't think I'm ready for this. She was like, <laughs> I'm scared of her. Does she have any curly hair? It's curlier than mine. Wow. Yeah. Well, she's, she's always straightened it too. Oh, yes, she does. Uh -huh. And in high school, she would just put like a mousse on it. Uh -huh. on you. And uh -huh. she would go to sleep with it wet and wake up like so cute. And uh -huh. I was like, I hate your guts. Yeah. I'm so yeah. What jealous. Yeah, did you, oh my gosh. So what do you think about this? It's really seriously so cute. It's seriously so cute. And we didn't even cut it. Like I would probably nip a few of these pieces down here, but you good. Maybe give me a few more layers in here just for shape, but I think it looks awesome. Look at you. Now the thing is, can I recreate this at home? Well, what was complicated about no, it? No, nothing. I think I can. It's like, it's really just layering products. Mm -hmm. It's choosing the right products for your hair. Right. That's the hardest that's part that's for everybody. Right. And that's why knowing those um, those things about your hair up front, those properties, like, is my hair damaged? Okay. Then I need to put more product on, right? That's easy. You don't even have to know that it's porosity. You can just say, yep, yeah, this hair is damaged because I dried it. I put stuff on it. Fantastic. Like that doesn't mean don't damage it. That just means like counter that yeah. with more product, with moisturizing products, but don't use lots of oils. You don't want to coat it. You're not trying to make up for the lack of health with product, right? That just gives you more control. Mm -hmm. The things that will really help you health-wise when you talk about all your skincare, mm -hmm. your AM, PM, like just deep condition. And also use a shampoo that's not really stripping on your hair. Mm -hmm. That's why I like Hair Story New Wash for you. I wouldn't recommend this to most new to curly people because it's a whole different mentality. Like I would probably recommend to most new curly people an inner scent shampoo mm -hmm. is a good way to start if you're used to cleansing your hair all the time. Most people that come see me are like, they've been doing this for a minute. Maybe it's been a month. Maybe it's been two years. Maybe it's been 10 years. But most of them have experimented a little bit before they walk in the mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. But if you're brand new to this, start with a gentle shampoo because you need to get used to the feeling of it lathering less and your hair being less squeaky. Okay. But for you, because you've done this before, you've done this dance, and you have a much drier hair type, I would say new wash is a good way to just like really scrub your scalp condition your ends all at the same time and it makes it just easy. Um, Leave-in conditioner, 
so important. So we talked about new wash, we talked about leave-in conditioner. I love tonic for your scalp. I think that's a really good thing to refresh, but there's just no other product like it. It's probably the least essential part of the routine, but do you feel it tingling yeah. on your head? Yeah, no. Like you love it the most. Yeah. It's yeah. like, no, it's it. like the Burt's Bees on your lips. Yeah. You're like, I, I don't know. I just love it. Yeah. So no, I love I it. And it's so it's like good for your scalp. Yeah. It can prevent a lot of hair loss just because of the virtue by virtue of the nature of the ingredients. In it. So it's good products. Um, and then what else did we use? Um, hair balm, Jesse Curl Spiralicious, mm -hmm. super budget friendly product. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. I need to order more to have in here. Mm -hmm. And then the Kevin Murphy Hydrate Me Mask. You're just going to use that once a month. It's easy peasy. That's going to be your clarifying day. That's the day you're not going to use new wash. That's the day you're going to use some shampoo that you have at home or like the AG Curl Fresh shampoo if you pick that up at Ulta or something like that. Yep. So washing, realistically, I do work out every day, which but not full sweat. So would is two to three days a week. That's when tonic comes in really handy. Uh -huh. So that's when like tonic will reset the pH of your scalp and it's really like liquidy. Did y'all see how like it is very, very runny. It's not viscous at all. So you're able to put it right where you need it. Okay. And it will neutralize the pH on your scalp because the pH of your sweat is higher than what your body actually likes, which is why some people get itchy scalp when they don't use something like that and they don't wash their hair after working out. So as long as you spray that where you want it, you can even put it on your ends. Look, you just refreshed your hair. You worked out, you didn't have to wash your hair, and now your scalp is refreshed, your ends are refreshed, you reactivated your products, so you don't have to do anything else, you're done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that could be your refresh onto itself. Undressed is a hair story product that I really like for refreshing. Let me grab my bottle. And it's just nice because it's like a salt spray without the salt. Okay. So if you have any like straggly pieces that don't want to curl, and it smells really good. It's like a vintage rosy smell. Mm -hmm. You can kind of just put that in there, give it a little bit of squeeze, and it's just kind of nut gripped. It's almost like a spray gel. It's almost like a salt spray. And putting it in little bits and pieces, like right where you need it, it's also heat activated. So if you're like, this is looking really flat. Mm -hmm. So spray a little bit of that on there. And then just dry that side mm -hmm. with your diffuser, just right there. Don't do the whole thing because it dries pretty fast. So if you just put it where you want it and then hit it with the diffuser for your refresh day, you're done. Like, let's say you slept on this and it's really mush and you can't bring it back to life. Mm -hmm. That's where you use something like this. And because it's not actually, it's like a salt spray without the salt. Salt can make your hair feel dry and kind of crunchy. This won't do that. Okay. So. It's a, it's a nice to have for you. I don't think it's necessary, but I love it. Yeah, and for no. me, it, there's nothing that can replace it. Um, in my routine for refreshing, I know a lot of my curl friends really prefer Colton King Set Spray, which is more like a hairspray. It's a heat protectant. Mm -hmm. It's a really good heat protectant. Mm -hmm. It's silicone free though. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really good product for refreshing also, but it's more like a hairspray, whereas Undressed is more like a salt spray. Okay. Yeah. So they just have a little bit different properties in terms of their ingredients. I feel like we talked a lot about all the things. This is seriously so This is fun. seriously so fun. This is so long. I think we're done though. I think we've made it in like time. No one's like left us yet. I hope this was so still, fun. Everybody's still, They're still there. They're hanging out. Hey guys. Okay, so I think we're all done. Again, Hair Story, you guys on this screen for Hair Story, you guys, if you're new clients and any of you guys that are, are new, not, I shouldn't say new clients, new customers of Hair Stories, you get $10 off of your purchase. Um, if you buy through Hair Story today, and I'll send you guys a link. I always have a link that's also $10 off of your purchase. So y'all can do that if you want to try that. I love my very favorites from Hair Story are New Wash Original, Hair Balm, Undressed, and I love powder. I don't think you get, do you get an oily scalp? No. Okay. I love powder because I get an issue scalp. So this is like, it's a clay-based dry shampoo, which is cool. So it gives you lift at the root and also like absorbs some oil so that you can like live your life. And I just love this, this spray nozzle because you can travel with it. Look at that. Oh, that's cute. Isn't that fun? Yeah. It's just like, it's fun. Anyway, that's another favorite of mine. So we won't be using that on Alyssa because it does not fit her needs. So I hope this was super, super interesting for you guys. I hope you learned a lot. Again, check out the Wavy Life for classes. I'm putting out my low density love class very soon. It's already finished. It's filmed. The trailer's ready to go. I'm just working on the website. It is coming. So if you have low density hair, unlike Alyssa. Um, I'll be talking about some techniques and things that you can do to find more expansion in your hair in that class. And that's it. Do you have any questions before we like 
say our goodbyes to everybody. I saw a couple people on the hair story thing talk about like listing out all the products, but it looks like are all the things that you used on that side. They should be listed. So this is our view. I don't know if I yes. they have the exact same view, but if you guys, you guys should be able to see off to the side of the chat, the products that are the ones that I asked them to list as my favorites. Awesome. Um, let me see if powder is in there. Yeah, powder should be in there. Okay, cool. So those are my top four. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining. This was so, 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 so fun. I'm gonna say bye, goodbye to each one of you before we hang out. Uh, this was so much fun. Um, we had a great time doing this, I think. Did you have fun? Totally. I had fun. Did, I are you like overwhelmed? Or no, 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 no. I know what I need to know. I know what I need know to know. I know what I don't yep. need to know. Yep. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, you've answered There's all the questions. There's so much noise out there and I find it to be so overwhelming. I'm probably gonna take a full month hiatus from all social media from like all of August. So you guys won't see me for a little while, at least after the low density class comes out. I'm gonna be taking a break. There's so much noise. I like to simplify. Mm -hmm. I feel like the things that I know and the things I like to share can feel complicated, but as always, I feel like once you know how things work, you know what to do. Mm -hmm. It's the same with skin. Yep. You know how it works, you know what to do. Yep. Thank you for giving us yes. the lesson yes. on the active. Yes, program. yes, That's yes. Awesome. No. Thank you guys. I'm going to hit in stream. Um, don't forget that I'll be answering your questions in an interview with Wes in a month or so. So be on the lookout for, um, for an email from me and I'll be talking that up on YouTube and Instagram as well so that you guys can join. It's going to be fun. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great, great rest of your day. Bye guys. See you guys soon. Thank you for joining. I will save this. It will go um, into my feed for a while so you guys can check that out. Alyssa is looking lovely. Someone said Alyssa's looking lovely. Uh, she is. Thanks, looks so guys. pretty. And y'all, her outfit, just give us a twirl. Just oh, this is a like a total Target thing. If y'all follow me, I do throw a little fashion on my Instagram too. <laughs> so this is my Target little two piece, but it, it's Target's cute. the best. Target's the best. I know, but you look yes, adorable. Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's hey, adorable. I need to go somewhere. You do. <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't know. I haven't even left yet. You want to go somewhere? Sure. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye guys. guys. Y'all have a great day. I love it. Okay. So 410. 410 people. Oh my God. Okay. You guys, thank you for joining too. I'm sorry that you had to look at my butt most of this time. I just don't have enough views all around me, but I did my best. I hope this was a fun and exciting way to do something new and different. Yeah. It's hard to YouTube now that I don't have the time to like sit and edit like I used to, but this was fun. And Alyssa's hair looks awesome. And like, look at your ends. I can't get over how dry they look and how dry they don't look now. Yeah. They might look dry tomorrow morning. Now, if they look a little dry tomorrow morning, what are you gonna do? Refresh. With what? Uh, I wanna get that stuff. Tonic. Oh, you want tonic, tonic and undress? Yeah, I want everything. The, this is your refresh. Too. Okay, refresh, and I'm gonna just gonna yeah. squinch up yeah. And, yeah. and go. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Bye guys, thank you for joining. We'll be back with more funny content, fun <laughs> content later. I, I'll do this again sometime. Y'all have a great day. Thank you for being here. Bye, guys. Oh, that was okay. somebody. <gasps>